allowed his fight with cancer to slow him down. He remained committed to those things most important to him, being a good husband, a proud father, and tirelessly supporting his community. Those who served alongside him on council or in the DeWinton community would agree. Larry was a hardworking, respected, and strong leader. A champion for his constituents and certainly someone who knew the meaning of service, Larry was a mentor to me. When I entered politics, I looked to people who I trusted and admired, people like Larry Spielak. Our community lost a friend and a great man. We extend our condolences to his wife, Danielle, his son, Ben, his friends and family, and colleagues at Foothills County, all of whom Larry loved dearly. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Etobicoke North. Mr. Speaker, insulin remains one of the most significant advances in the history of medicine and continues to save lives of millions of people globally. JDRF Kids for a Cure are honoring Banting and Best Gift to the World, and I had the privilege of meeting virtually with three of their amazing young leaders, each with big dreams for the future. They are 15-year-old Ann Pettigrew, 9-year-old Maya Webster, and 7-year-old Kieran Palmer, who all also told me about their lives with type 1 diabetes. While these young champions face challenges, they advocate for all the other children living with type 1 diabetes. They want members of parliament to know the life-saving impact of Canadian research and innovation has had and continues to have on the lives of young people with the disease. Mr. Speaker, Anne, Maya and Kieran are making a real difference. They are champions and super. Superstars. L'honorable député d'Abitibi. The Honourable Member for Abitibi, Bay James Dunovic, AU. Mr. Speaker, this week, the, Cor the Corporation des Fleurons du Québec proceeded to the 15th unveiling of the horticultural classification of municipalities. This is a great way to highlight the many efforts made by municipalities to sustainably beautify their environment and the quality of life of their citizens. I'm very proud to announce that the town of Centerre, one of the most beautiful towns in Abitibi, has been awarded four flagships for Fleuron. As they say, the efforts that have been made for all the improvements and investments planned to beautify the municipality are once again bearing fruit. Among the efforts put forth by Centaire are the 100th anniversary forest of the Desjardins Pavilion and the flowers and decorative lightings. Over the next few years, the city plans to develop a strategy for beautification at the residential, commercial and institutional levels. I would therefore like to congratulate the Mayor of Centaire, Mr Jean-Maurice Matt, as well as all the people who have contributed to the beautification of their city. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Bravo. The Honourable Member for Brampton Centre. Mr. Speaker, our government recognizes that small businesses are the lifeblood for our communities and the vital for Canada economic recovery. I'm honored today to speak in recognition of a small... I can interrupt for a second, uh, the Honourable Member for Brampton Centre. Uh, your camera doesn't seem to be on. If I can just get you to turn your camera on. I'm sure people want to see you uh, with, give your statement. Oh. There we go. Perfect. I will start again. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, our government recognizes that small businesses are the lifeblood of our communities and vital for Canada's economic recovery. I am honored today to speak in recognition of a thriving small business in my riding of Brampton Centre. Founded in 2001 by Dinesh Gautam, KJ Designers has served the greater Brampton community by providing high-quality Indian wedding fashion outfits throughout Canada. Unfortunately, Dinesh business had some significant downfalls during pandemic. However, with the help of our government's plans to support small businesses, KJ Designers continues to keep the doors open and the business is out to boom now. Thanks, Dinesh, to you, your family, your staff, and your commitment to serve the communities. Your efforts never go unnoticed. Thanks. The Honourable Member for Yorkton, Melville. Speaker, racism in all its forms is unacceptable, including within the Canadian Armed Forces. Recently in the Globe and Mail, former Defence Minister David Pratt was right to call it out. However, his assertion that racism was solely to blame for the Somalia affair misleads Canadians about what truly happened in Somalia. 
Members of the Canadian Airborne Regiment were poisoned with illegal use of the anti-malaria drug mefloquine. Shamefully, the Liberals shut down the Somali inquiry just before the misuse and impact of mefloquine toxicity was to be exposed. As a result, the Airborne was disbanded. Mefloquine became D&D's preferred anti-malaria drug until 2017. Families have been destroyed, lives have been upended, and lost to suicide. The impact of mefloquine on the Somali affair should have been investigated. While our allies have shown compassion and support for their soldiers impacted by this drug, this Liberal government prefers to meet our veterans in court. The Somali affair is a painful chapter of our history. Our veterans and all Canadians deserve to know the truth. This is one apology the Liberals refuse to take responsibility for. The Honourable Member for Hull Aylmer. Mr. Le Président. Mr. Speaker, today I'm recognizing the excellence of the Volunteer Centre of Hull, which is celebrating 25 years of existence in my riding of Hull Aylmer. Whether it be through Meals on Wheels services, transportation to appointments or tax clinics, this organization improves the quality of life of thousands of residents. The centre has always innovated to meet various needs. Through its work in the field with vulnerable seniors, the centre breaks the social isolation and loneliness that seniors too often experience. Above all, I would like to thank the centre Inaudible for the interpreter. Your enthusiasm inspires us and gives us the means to act. Happy birthday. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Willowdale. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to recognize and celebrate Global Entrepreneurship Week. This initiative is hosted by Futurepreneur, a uniquely Canadian success story, which has supported the creation of well over 11,000 new Canadian businesses since its inception. Global Entrepreneurship Week celebrates entrepreneurs as the backbone of the Canadian economy, a driving force for innovation, job creation, and prosperity from coast to coast to coast. We know that our entrepreneurs have been particularly hard hit by the COVID-19 pandemic, but we also know that they will prove instrumental in our mission to build back better. The entrepreneurial spirit of Canadians remains unflappable, contributing to our culture, economy, and local identity. In small towns and big cities across the country, entrepreneurs are still launching new businesses, revitalizing main streets, and creating jobs and economic opportunity. I invite all colleagues to join me in recognizing Global Entrepreneurship Week and thanking Futurepreneur Canada for their peerless work in supporting innovators and risk takers throughout our beautiful country. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Niagara Falls. Mr. Speaker, yesterday I was able to attend virtually the annual Tourism Congress hosted by the Tourism Industry Association of Canada. Over 2,400 travel and tourism professionals registered to take part, and much of what was discussed centred on the need for additional and tailored supports from this federal government. Since the start of this pandemic, our Conservative opposition has been asking this Liberal government to present a sector-specific travel and tourism recovery plan. Nine months later, the government has still not taken any action. The absence of a dedicated sector-specific tourism recovery plan is an abject failure of this Liberal government. Destination Canada's own State of the Industry report from October stated, and I quote, we need to help provide a light at the end of the tunnel. Mr. Speaker, this is a call for action. The tourism sector, and more importantly, Canada's travel and tourism workers, want to get back to work and do so safely, and they are looking to Parliament for timely and critical solutions. Now is the time to deliver. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Before continuing, I just want to remind the honourable members that statements are being made, and uh, it's nice to see that the social distancing is taking place, but it doesn't mean you have to talk loud and out drown out the person who's trying to speak. I just want to remind them, and the people I'm speaking to aren't listening, so I'm going to say it again, and hopefully someone will point them out. Very good. Thank you. The honourable member for Winnipeg North. 
Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. The Government of Canada is focused on minimizing the negative impact of the coronavirus, uh, Mr. Speaker. The second wave is upon us here in Canada. And as the government continues to ensure to work with the many different stakeholders, whether it's provinces, territories, indig Indigenous leaders, and the many different stakeholders that are making a difference, it's working together. That's how it is that we're going to be best able to ensure that we minimize the impact of the coronavirus, uh, ma ma uh, Mr. Speaker. In the Senate, we have legislation that is about to pass that's going to deal with an extension of the wage subsidy uh, program, which continues to protect millions of jobs, Mr. Speaker. There's so many things that we can still be doing. We're looking for all uh, interested parties to get on board, to be a part of a Team Canada approach at uh, defeating the coronavirus. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Markham Unionville. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Gun crimes in the GTA are out of control. Dante Andreata, a 12 years old boy, was caught in the crossfire of a gang-related shooting. He lost his life walking home from the grocery store with his mother. The number, the, the number of criminals with a total disregard for human lives is growing. The Toronto police are reporting more shooting deaths than this year. That is six incidents away from an all-time high. The time to act on gun crime is now. My bill, Bill C-238, is one of the ways we can fight gun crime fueled by smuggled guns. It will keep dangerous criminals behind bars for longer and make it more difficult to get bail. That is just part of the solution. Unfortunately, shooting victims statistics are not part of the Liberal government's agenda. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Richmond, Athabasca. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today, I would like to take the time to uh, commend the wind of solidarity blowing in my riding in this very difficult time. The Bois Franc Érable Chamber of Commerce and Industry and the Chamber and Chambre de Commerce et d'Entrepreneuriat des Sources, among others, have gone ahead with a gift certificate campaign to support our local merchants in partnership with Desjardins. On social networks, a vast campaign to encourage our local restaurateurs was also set up. In the municipality of Saint-Camille, a social financing campaign to support the cultural sector was also, was also had held to support our seniors, notably. Initiatives such as these, Mr. Chair, Mr. Speaker, there are hundreds of them in my region, as there are no doubt elsewhere in the country. I would like to commend all those who are rolling up their sleeves and showing great generosity and solidarity during this difficult period. From the bottom of my heart, Mr. Speaker, I would like to thank them. The Honourable Member for Winnipeg Centre. Uh, Mr. Speaker, carceral institutions with populations primarily from BIPOC communities violate the fundamental human rights of incarcerated persons, and the pandemic has made it even worse. Federal and provincial institutions in Manitoba are in a public health crisis, dealing with multiple COVID-19 outbreaks, including 27 cases reported yesterday at a women's correctional centre. The Elizabeth Fry Society of Manitoba has been calling on governments to improve access for families and outside supports and to release youth individuals who are immunocompromised and those on remand or those in prison for administrative reasons. Mr. Speaker, the right to adequate conditions for health and well-being is recognized in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Incarcerated women have a right to health, safety and security of the person, a guarantee enshrined in our charter. Women currently being housed in these institutions are grandmothers, mothers, sisters and aunties. The government needs to listen to families and organizations to ensure their safety. Honorable Deputy. The Honourable Member for Salaberry sur Roy. Mr. Speaker, today I'm pleased to mark the 50th anniversary of the Centre du Partage, a social, uh, social economy organization of great value to the community of Salaberry sur Roy. It was in 1970 that Sister Jeanne Laperle, supported by Sisters Claire and Blandine, became involved in the mission of sharing. 
they bet that the generosity of uh, their local neighbors would allow them to generate mutual aid and solidarity by administering a large second-hand clothing store the centre du partage is able to give the uh, to the next one while promoting the ecological objective of reusing our goods in 2019 alone uh, close to $200,000 was donated to other local organizations thanks to the centre du partage I would also like to commend the contribution of Lucie Allé-Lévesque, who led the organization for nearly 20 years, as well as the entire current management team, including Francine Litt Miron and Joanne Vigier, in addition to the many volunteers who keep the work of the Sisters of the Good Council going. Long live the Centre du Partage. The Honorable Member for Cypress Hills Grasslands. The decision to ban Huawei from deploying 5G should be an easy one for the government. Our closest allies in the Five Eyes have all banned Huawei from their networks. We're the only ones who haven't. Next door in the U.S., our most important trading partner and military ally banned Huawei for national defense and security reasons. Yet the Liberals are holding out, as if they're buying time. First, they are going to decide before the election, and then it was after the election. Over a year has gone by and still no decision. But we've seen their delaying tactics before. If the Liberals don't want to take responsibility or stand up for anything, they choose death by delay. Energy projects, the tech frontier mine, illegal train blockades that held industry hostage. If they hope to deal with the Chinese government by using a weak tactic that causes suffering here at home, they need a reality check. This ruthless regime has a long record of breaching security and stealing intellectual property. And that was before 5G. The Prime Minister needs to stop wasting time, take a firm stance, and say no to Huawei. The Honourable Member for Lex San Luis. I rarely met an elected representative at any level of government as attuned to the interests and concerns of her constituents as Maria Totino. Last week, Maria embarked on a well-deserved retirement from public life after serving the good people of Bay Durfe for a decade and a half. Maria led this picturesque and volunteer-driven community with an inspiring combination of vision, energy, and personal connection to her fellow citizens. Maria's leadership extended well beyond the town. She helped defend the interests of the wider collection of West Island municipalities in the transition period following the 2004 municipal demergers in Quebec. Maria poured her trademark dedication into the Train de l'Ouest campaign for better commuter rail service to downtown Montreal that eventually led to the REM light rail project. Thank you, Maria and congratulations on a job well done. Oral questions, question oral.